everyone. Today I've got a special, special guest and it's a very exciting day for me because we all remember Dino, right? I mean, how can we forget Dino? We spoke so much in the past um, and we had those nearly two years together collaborating and um, co-hosting the show. But we haven't spoken for a year and he's been doing some very, very exciting, life-changing things. So step back, just sit back. Put your headphones on if you want to take a walk or whatever, but this one you don't want to miss because Dino has, is going to change the world. We know he was going to change it anyway, but now he's really stepped into his power slowly, slowly, right? Um, so, without no further ado, hello Dino, I'm so hey. happy to see you today. How are you doing? I'm doing good, I'm doing good, thank you. How about you? Very well, very well, thank you. Enjoying the fourth weekend. Everything's great. Everything's slowed down for a little bit, which is awesome. And um, I see you have a variety of guests on the show. Good for you. I do, I do. Um, yes, I'm trying. I'm looking at a whole lot of different angles with the show just to change it up a bit. Uh, you know, we had our three-year anniversary, so it's it's um, it's time to just shift a bit, right, and do different things. So I've got a few things planned in the future. Um, yeah. So it's pretty cool. So did you enjoy the fireworks yesterday? I did. I did. They were actually, I stepped out of my balcony and I could watch them. It was great. <laughs> oh, that is so cool. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. thought maybe you'd watch them on the beach or something exciting. Well, they, they you know, obviously they have them everywhere. But uh, I was at the beach, ironically. But then when the day was done, I came home and for extra fun, I'm like, oh, they're going off. So let me just step outside. So... <laughs> It was great. It's, uh, it's, it's good to be uh, back from travels for a few days, and, uh, and all's good. Uh, yes, yes. So tell, tell me about, Dino, you know, what have you been doing for the past year? Um, I know you, it's, it seems like you're a jet setter. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, you know, look, um, in recovery, you, you know, I mean, there's no right time to start, and, you know, when you stop and whatever. You know, you gotta you gotta work with where you're at, and you know, obviously, be patient. And as long as you keep moving forward, that's great. Uh, but my philosophy as a career-long entrepreneur has been always moving forward as well, and dreaming mm -hmm. and dreaming big and dreaming hard. So, you know, it's uh, it's kind of a challenge. You know, obviously, to embrace the recovery lifestyle and what you do. What are you gonna do next? And people talk about one day at a time, which is great, and it's very important one day at a time for people in recovery. But I don't dream one day at a time, you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. You, you just can't. <laughs> so um, it, it just takes some special soul searching to just kind of find that magic um, where you're you again, but the new and improved you, so to speak. And, uh, and where you could just excel. And this time it's kind of uh, crazy because what I'm doing and what I'm involved in is it just, just hits every box. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing it where I can shock her. I'm clean and sober. So I can actually remember the experience and there's just complete focus and clarity. So, um, you know, this new technology, Opiate, that I'm involved in, that I'm actually also spokesperson for. It's so in my wheelhouse and so much of what I believe in, and it also checks off the entrepreneurial boxes that I, I'm just having a blast with it. And it just, it's, it's taking off. So it's extremely rewarding as well. Mm, that's that sounds like good. Okay, we'll speak about that in a moment. But I want to ask you a bit. Of course, um, this is a different a vibe, right? Now you're clean and sober compared to all your your entrepreneurial like explosions in the past. Um, as as um, well in a clouded mind, let's just say that. Under the influence, yeah. Yeah. That, which yes. is crazy, but yeah, under <laughs> under the influence, every single thing I've done has been either under the influence of drugs or alcohol. And <laughs> you know, some, some, some people can't function. I was highly functioning all the way till the end. So very weird. 
Very weird. So imagine now with that power of um, sobriety, how far you're going to go um, with this project that you're working on. So, yeah. so that's just. But I, I want. I'm, I'm thinking about lifestyle. You talk about um, a new lifestyle. What exactly does that mean? Ah, uh, a new lifestyle. So you could be sober, and and congratulations at any point in sobriety. But I mean, yeah, you could yeah. be sober one day, and that's great. You can be sober a year, that's great. Two years, that's great, right? Um, lifestyle happens when you finally believe and know that you can never drink or use again, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That it's final, it's over, and you're just going to have to adapt and work around it because you will never, you know, you have like in the back of your mind, maybe one day I'll be a social drinker. Maybe one day I could just have a glass, right? We, we're not those people, you know, mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. will, will, will tell you this. But, but when you finally adapt and, and you switch the word sobriety to recovery, when you finally treat it like a lifestyle, um, that's, that's when everything changes, you know. And, and you got to think about it this way, okay? In all my entrepreneurial quests throughout my entire career, you know, when I had a vision, when I had a dream, I chased it. I chased it so hard I could taste it. Yes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's passion in, in that. There's drive. There's energy. Um, when I want to rebuild my body, you know, you go to you go work out. I mean, there's no rule what you have to look like, but obviously you try and self improve. You improve every day, but you attack that, right? I want to change. I want to look better. I want to feel better. I want to grow muscle. You know, whatever your deal is, and you attack that with a passion, right? With fire. Mm -hmm. um, let's even talk about the people that are active in their addiction. They attack that with fire. <laughs> and passion yes, yes you want to drink you want to drink now when you want to use you want to use now you'll find a way whatever you're doing whatever obstacle is in your way you will find a way to get what you want right mm, 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 so mm. why then when somebody gets clean and sober they don't attack it usually the same way do you see what i'm saying mm, treat mm. it like one of your passions you already know you can do it I already knew I could do it in business. Yes. I proved it yes, year after yes, year, yes. decade after decade. I already proved I could go to the gym and I could get results. I already proved that I'm a great alcoholic and a great drug addict because I would get what I want. I'd find the money. I'd find the dealer. I'd find the liquor store that was open. I mean, I'd do what I had to do to get it, right? Yeah, but yeah. This is just another thing for me to conquer. <laughs> and so it's become a lifestyle. And it's actually a very, very perfect example, I think. It, well, at least for me. I shouldn't say for everybody. But that's, that's what gets me going. Because I'm tapping into something that I already am. I'm mm. a driven, passionate person. I have been all my life. This should be no different. I should treat it no different than anything else I've ever done. Oh, that's, but that's you now. What about someone who isn't in that, like, you know, we know that if you're a drug addict, you're an alcoholic, right? You'll go and you'll use or you'll, fi or you'll find it no matter what, right? Right. What about those people who can't translate it into um, recovery? Well, you know, I mean, that's a good question. And I, I, I wish I could give you a good answer, you know, an easy answer, but... You know, there's uh, up until this point, unless they've broken some kind of scientific development in the last five minutes, <laughs> there's no pill that you could take that's just gonna just stop everything in its tracks and you're gonna be fine. Um, so, so if you don't embrace it, and I'm not knocking anybody because there's millions and millions who struggle, um, not every day's gonna be a home run, not every day's gonna be perfect. But you got to keep trying to be better than you are today, better than you were yesterday, and, and so on and so forth. But, you know, you're going to have problems. I, mm -hmm. I don't know how else to say it. If you don't embrace um, sobriety and make it a recovery lifestyle, you're going to have issues. You're going to have ups and downs. You could possibly have uh, relapses. You could always be. You could, you could even die. I don't know a better way to say it 
Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you have to find a way. Mm-hmm. I suppose it's, it's like everything, you have to make that decision. So you, you have to decide to, to recover, right? And decide you're yeah, worthy I, enough I, I to, to live. I, I, I mean, I could support you and, and I can wish you the best and all that stuff. Everybody can. Friends, family, even perfect strangers can. But if I, I don't, I can't care about your sobriety and your recovery more than you do. I mean, it all starts with you. You have to want it bad enough, like you wanted all the other things in your life. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing. I mean, it's constant, daily, you know, fine tuning of an engine. You know what I mean? I mean, it, it, it's just like everything else. People will swear by their workouts. They'll go, oh, I, it's 8 o'clock, i got to be in the gym. Oh, I, you know, I have to follow the strict diet. Or normally at this time I take a walk. Or normally at this time we go and play bingo. Or, you know, whatever you do, mm-hmm. treat it the same way. Set some mm-hmm. time aside to just kind of reaffirm that, hey, am I doing okay? You know, am I improving? Am I, you know, it's, it's mind, body, and spirit. It's all three things. And you have to exercise them just like you do everything else in life. Mm-hmm. So you know, um, on on online, is ev- everyone's talking about morning routines. That's a big thing now, right? Morning routines. Is yeah. So no. so do you do big? Do you do morning routines? Like, do you wake up every morning and go and do go to the gym and then I don't know read a book or whatever? You know, do you have a set program that you do every day before you start your day? Um. You know, most people do, I guess. I, I don't think that's a new thing. I mean, people have done that. I mean, yes, I know. Two years in our conversations, we were talking about put down the things that you want to accomplish today and whatever you don't do, whatever you haven't crossed off your list, carry it over to the next day and add it on the to-do list, right? We talked about that. So yeah. It can't be a new thing, but um, look, you got to... You, you, yeah, it's it's good to have routines, right? But but don't be one of these people like if you don't work out till eight oh five and you were supposed to start at eight, you freak out. You know what I mean? Or when I travel, you know, I'll find the time to do all the things that I like doing on a daily basis. But it may not be first thing in the morning. You know, it just depends. You have to adjust too. That's mm-hmm. part of life. Mm-hmm. There's this, I mean, so you could just see, by, just by the few minutes that we're talking, that number one, there's no one set rule. Yeah. And number two, you have to be adjustable. But what what is, in all cases, common is the moving forward driven mentality. Mm-hmm. I don't care mm-hmm. who you are. You look at the mm-hmm. most successful athletes that everybody wants to be like, the most successful musicians that everybody wants to be like, the most successful entrepreneurs that everybody wants to be like. They all have the same things in common. They are driven. They move forward, always. And they just, if they fall, which they know they will, they just get up, scrape themselves off, and just start again. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that's common. That's the thing that never changes. Everything else is adjustable. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm, mm, mm. Makes sense. Um, you were talking about traveling because I, I know you've been traveling a lot now, right? How does that affect your your well-being? Um, so, does it cause more stress? And um, like because you, you're working harder, you're tired. Because I know you, you know stress has a, has an influence on people relapsing. I'm just wondering how someone would cope with stress. That's basically what I'm saying. In a, yeah. in a situation, and I mean, not, not everyone's traveling all the time, but how do you cope with stress and know that, because it's easy sometimes under stress to, because I mean, I know of people that have got, uh, have, the stress has been so much that they've gone back to use or to, or to drink alcohol or whatever it is. So how do you stop that? Well, you know, for me, for, first of all, traveling and all the things that I'm doing, it's, it's totally fun. There's absolutely no stress because I believe in what I'm doing. I love what I'm doing. And when you, when you have those things, you really, you don't carry stress with you. Mm-hmm. People, you know, um, were, were once a long time ago, uh, 
you know, people would kind of aggravate me, you know, if they aggravate anybody. If you don't agree with somebody or they say a few things or whatever, you sometimes have the tendency to take it personal. It doesn't bother me, you know. I mean, again, that, that alone takes practice. But um, there are signs before the signs for people that, that do get stressed. Um, you know, you'll, you'll start feeling sluggish, you'll start feeling grumpy, little things will bother you more than they used to. Those are signs that you really shouldn't ignore. Mm-hmm. How do you fix it? I don't know. I mean, I, I don't have a magic pill, like I said, but one of the ways you fix them, I mean, some people find um, a release in, in exercise. Some people find release in just blasting music in the car, driving fast. Don't go over 55. <laughs> but you know what I mean. But uh, or or just reaching out and talking to a friend, or uh, believe it or not, doing something that is uncomfortable. Uh, that that very moment, just to kind of break out of it. So you get in these patterns. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, I was watching uh, who's that guy, the, the, the dog whisperer, right? <laughs> And, and, you know, it, it may seem like a stupid comparison, but, you know, the way he was training in this episode, the dog was always focused, focused, like hyper-focused, and everybody around was tense, so the dog was tense, yes, right? Yes, and then yes, when another yes. dog comes by, it would just, like, you know, look at it, and just, like, ready to just run after it and attack it, right? Mm-hmm. And what did the dog whisper do? He went... And the dog just kind of like, it loses focus for a second. And then it's just like, well, wait a minute, what am I doing? I mean, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's a, I'm explaining it very simply, but what you have to do if you're in that funk, if you're in that rut, if you're in that moment where you're just like, oh, no. you got to go sh- and get out of it. <laughs> you got to do something different. Call a friend. Uh, I've never said this before, but, but you know, again, in the, in the two, two and a half years that I've discovered this wonderful world of social media that is new to me, it's foreign, and not all of it is good, believe me, but there is a tremendous community, mm-hmm. a recovery community, on social platforms. And you'll know the people that follow, the ones that, you know, you can relate to, the ones that make you feel good, the ones that have a great message. The ones that aren't doom and gloom, you know. I mean, you, you know, you could change mm, them, mm, like mm. change a TV channel. I, I don't have to tell you how to do it. But, but that, that, that's a support system that is relatively new. Mm, you know? mm, mm. Uh, so, so that is a great way to plug in. And if you need to plug in personally, there are AA meetings that go on all day, all night, all hours, everywhere in the world. Um, that even if you don't, believe in everything that AA teaches. You're in a group of people that the only common thread of all different walks of life, all different people, is they all have decided that we 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 got to find a better way. They're all struggling, they're all recovering, all in their own timeline. Nobody's better than the other person. Nobody looks down at the, at the other person. Nobody makes, I mean, they're all welcome. So mm-hmm. there's a lot of outlets. Again, though, you know, how bad do you want it? Are you going to say, well, yeah. wait, I don't feel like getting up and doing your name, and it's going to take time, and I don't feel like changing, right? Mm-hmm. Or I, I don't feel like talking to somebody online because then they're going to want to talk back. It, it, it starts with you. I mean, you, you have to take action or nothing we just talked about is going to work unless you take the first step, okay? Yes. So I'm not trying to scare your viewers, but I'm just being very honest. I mean, how bad do you want it? Just like when somebody says, oh, I want to be rich. How bad do you want it? What are you prepared to do? Oh, man, I want to get ripped. How bad do you want to get ripped? You're not going to do it with one push-up. You've got to work. Yes, or watch um, Netflix. Yeah, well, but here's the thing. And, And even if you work and even if you have that seemingly perfect body or that perfect bank account or the perfect dream job or, you know, whatever. You don't just coast. I don't care what anybody says. You don't just say, ah, I can relax. For how long? <laughs> you know what I mean? And then, and then what, right? So it's a constant 
quest for per perfection that you will never attain, but the quest towards it. And that's a lifetime. That is a lifestyle. And that's yes. what I'm Yes, I love that. Um, and, and I love it that you say it's a, a quest for per perfection because we all know, I mean, we've spoken about it often. Um, perfection is a fallacy. Perfection's not real. And imagine how boring life would be if we were perfect, right? Yeah, right. But you'd want to be more perfect and more perfect. Yes, more yes, perfect. yes, know, and, yes. And you could go so crazy it becomes a disease. I mean, you got to be happy with who you are, right? Mm -hmm. um, and whatever it is what it is but yes. but be be happy and comfortable in your own skin and then don't compare yourself to other people but compare yourself to your own progress but forward motion always you know yes. and that is such a simple thing that we're talking about however it's a lot easier to say and a lot harder to practice it takes work but nothing in life is easy and nothing in life is free, even though a lot of people think it is. You've got to work at it. Yes. And so recovery is no different than anything else that people struggled through or powered through, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And again, um, like we've spoken but a lot, it's about um, finding that, that self-worth within you. So that's a big process on its own. And when you realize that, <clears throat> you know what, I'm valuable enough, I'm worth a good life, then that also changes everything, right? Yeah, and when you change, you know, first people want to change other people <laughs> because they're the problem. But when you start realizing that, hey, you know what? They are too much work for me and I can't change them, I can't control them. Mm -hmm. But I can control and change me, right? So yes, when you yes. start to change, uh, then either the people around you change with you uh, or you change them, or you move on. Yes. Where things will happen. And yes. so when people are just like, well, we used to be friends and we're not friends anymore, that doesn't mean anything bad happened. It just means that your pursuits and your endeavors are maybe a little different over time than somebody else's, you know? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, as far as lifelong friends are concerned, it's great to have lifelong friends that you see every day, and a lot of people do. I have lifelong friends, believe it or not, that I haven't seen in years, decades, right? And you see them and you enjoy them, but even when that happens, they're different than, yes. than what I remember. Yes. And I'm different than what they remember, you know what I mean? And yes. I can't, I'm not so sure that if we were together 24 seven, day after day, that we'd have the same friendship. You know what I mean? Because we've both changed. So, yes. It's, it's a journey of self. It's not a journey of like a group, mm. like, you know, going to the bathroom together. Hey, go to the <laughs> bathroom together, you know. You know what I mean? You know, this group of girls that, that goes to the bathroom, don't, don't, don't have haters on this one, but you know what I'm talking about. I mean, this, is, this isn't a group coalition that you're trying to do. This is your personal journey, right? So you have to come first. And then people yes. come along and enjoy the ride with you, right? But the people that are like, what should I do? What do you think I should do? I'm going to tell you what you should do. You should know. And if you don't know, ask some questions or formulate your own opinion. But you have to keep moving forward. You have your own journey to follow, just like I have mine. You know? mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, and I love that um, because I, I realized throughout my life it's been like that. So, because you grow, you have a relation, a friendship, or whatever, and then suddenly you grow apart, and the friendships just like fall away, and you continue. And yes, nothing really happens, but you just grow differently. Um, so, and and you have to continue doing that work, so that you can grow within yourself, and and that's the only way you really develop even your business or whatever it is, um, right? anything yeah you're right so now we we spoke about lifestyle tell me a bit about this this awesome project that you this new um project you're doing well the the technology is called opiate okay and and basically the reason that i got involved the reason that i love it so much is what i experienced myself after 
recovery after mm -hmm. I got out of treatment. Okay, and so when you get out of the, uh, if you go to rehab, or even if you don't, I mean, you know, there's the gold standard in 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 recovery in the therapy part of it is called MAT. That's M A T, uh, medically assisted treatment. And that's just a fancy way of saying it's a combination of behavioral health, counseling, and medications prescribed for you to help you with the withdrawal, to help you stay calm and balanced and so you don't feel anxiety or depression, right? And um, my experience with Matt was, a, was an absolute nightmare and, and actually well documented. Is, is the fact that almost a year after I got out of treatment, you know, I, I, I think I was on your show and I, yeah, I wasn't yeah, all the there. Yeah, the panic attack. I wasn't all there, you know? Yeah. Why? Because I was polluted with, with, with all this medication. Because it starts this way, right? I was clean and sober for about eight months before this happened. But I'm isolated. It was during COVID. I'm in a house by myself. All I'm doing is binge watching TV. I'm trying to stay healthy. I'm trying to eat healthy, but I have no friends. I didn't know about a sober community. I didn't know about social platforms or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And I stayed in touch with counselors who would have, um, you know, weekly or biweekly, uh, bi-monthly sessions with me. And they're like, how do you feel? I'm like, I don't know. It's been eight months, but I really feel like drinking. I'm terrified. I don't, want, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do that, I'm, I'm, I, I don't get any sleep, you know, so I was just, like, as if I just quit, okay, that's kind of yes. how I started feeling, yeah. and they're like, they don't really want to hear what I have to say, they're just like, oh, it sounds like you have baseline depression, so we're going to prescribe some medication for you, but it won't take effect for maybe a couple of months, but, you know, you just keep taking it every day, it sounds like you also have baseline anxiety so we're going to give you something for that you won't feel that for about six weeks but it'll it needs to stay and work in your system and then if you really feel anxious we're going to give you something else but don't take it because it's addictive uh, my head's spinning right i'm like what and by the way if i'm telling you that i'm having thoughts of drinking and using and that i can't sleep and i'm very anxious and i'm terrified and all of these other things you don't give me something that will take effect in six weeks. Of course. I don't yes. have six weeks, okay? Yeah. yeah. So I'm not the only one who, who goes through this. There's a lot of people, especially now that I'm talking to thousands, that will attest to the same type of experience that I had. Mm -hmm. It's very uncomfortable. It's very impersonal. And you can easily start understanding why we lose people why people relapse. And, yeah. and, and when they relapse, they, granted, they're clean and sober for about six months, eight months, something like that. So we remember the dosage that we used to take. So we're gonna take that, if yeah. not before. And that's why you hear about the overdoses and the deaths, is because we, we overtake and our body's not used to it, and all of a sudden it's like, boom, mm -hmm. you know, you, could, you can easily die. That's where we lose people. Now, I could have become a statistic. I could have been one of those that we let. I, mean, I would have gone hard, I'm just telling you right now. Mm -hmm. But I decided to write a book. I decided to stay occupied. I decided to just refocus and, um, and just pour out my feelings and my thoughts. And then after that, I got introduced to this beautiful community. And after that, I got introduced to the folks at Opiate. And, and as soon as I heard, what it was all about. I mean, I just, I got it right away. And, and, and the reason I love it is this technology can distinguish in real time the level of withdrawal. Just like you're measuring your blood sugar with a glucometer, just mm -hmm. like the same way they, they you know, you, you blow for an alcohol test, you use a breathalyzer to measure the amount of alcohol in your blood. Mm -hmm. That's the same way this measures the level of withdrawal. Not only that, it can distinguish between anxiety, withdrawal, and depression. Oh, that's big. Which is huge, okay? Yeah. And this is in real time. So now, 
Imagine the gold standard, which is math, the gold standard for the last 40 years, by the way, <laughs> and my personal horrible experience with it. Imagine if I was wearing one of these. Okay? This is the smartwatch. Hey there. We're just breaking from the episode for a moment. I just want to tell you about something that's really, really exciting. We speak a lot in this podcast about self-worth and self-doubt and self-belief. And so I have this very exciting challenge for you. Because what if, what if you could break down self-doubt and find self-worth and find those treasures within you so that you can show the world your value because you know and find your beauty because it's there. You just need to find it together. So I've created a five-day mini challenge. It's a one-on-one -on -one coaching experience. And together we will work through this and find those beautiful treasures within so you can shine your light to the world. If this sounds like something you're interested in, we've got I've got all the details on the pinned comments below this video. So thank you for listening and let's get back to this exciting conversation. It's been powered with opiate technology, okay? Mm, mm, mm. This technology, the biometrics that it reads off of me every five minutes, that go to the database at Opiate, and then Opiate takes its algorithm and the machine learning, combines it with that data, and it sends it back to the doctor in real time. Wow. So I don't even need to talk, <laughs> to be honest with you. Don't ask me how I'm feeling, because I may lie, I may exaggerate it, I may dumb it down. I mean, you know, it depends on my mood. I have an ego, right? This thing doesn't have an ego, it doesn't have feelings doesn't care who's in the room. It just mm -hmm. takes all the information that's uniquely me and gives these valuable insights to the doctor in real time so that the doctor can, can formulate a treatment for me. It's beautiful. Right? It's beautiful. So in treatment center, you know, in, in, in my group, there was like 30 people or 50 people. I can't, I mean, they, they just kept piling in. Yeah, yeah. There was yeah. like a 30 day, kind of revolving door, right? 30 mm -hmm. days has been a long time, by the way. But, you know, there were people that came in there just for alcohol, you know, for, for like vodka or, 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 you know, bourbon. There were other people that came in for cocaine, other people that you know, their drug of choice was fentanyl. You know, there's all different types. Yet if you really look back on it now, now that I'm involved with all this stuff and now that I know better, they were all treated the same. Yeah, it's... There were people that were six foot five. I'm five foot six. They were 300 pounds. I'm not 300 pounds, <laughs> right? But they were, you know, take two pills, call me in the morning kind of thing. Mm -hmm. How does that work? Mm -hmm. So just find out how archaic and in the Stone Ages the method of treatment has been. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden this new technology is like, wow, it's almost like customized just for me. So it'll help me recover faster and safer and more effectively, especially in the one day one to 35 days, which is critical, you could go anyway. You could see yeah. a commercial about beer or people having fun drinking vodka or drinking, you know, whiskey or scotch. Mm -hmm. And you can, you could, it could trigger you. You could see somebody like a, a sports event and you'd be like, man, look how jumpy he is. I wish I had cocaine. I mean, whatever your drug is, right? So that's a very critical time. Mm -hmm. And isn't it nice to be able to have something that, that at a treatment center, they know every five minutes what you're doing. If there's a spike, if there's a change or something, you'll, they'll know it immediately and they can treat you properly. So that's step one. And step one is already being implemented. We're powering our technology and treatment centers all over the country. Mm. And right after that, all over the world. Um, because the more treatment centers that are available to people, and when they know that there's hope, we'll point them to these treatment centers so they can get the most cutting edge, gold standard care there is in the world, on the planet. This is gonna change the way people recover from for decades. Yes. Okay? Yes. Then step two in the future is going to be a version that's going to be available just directly to the public 
it's not going to be as technical as the treatment center one, the life-saving one. But it's going to be designed more for the people that are uh, in long-term recovery, people that are clean and sober five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. You think you got it, okay? Yeah. You think you got a handle on it. But what I have found is those are these individuals that have a tendency to get relaxed. Remember, it's an everyday forward motion, always constant, you gotta be on your game. Yeah. Like yeah. in anything you do, right? And so people count the number of steps, people count the number of stairs, people count their heart rate, people count their blood pressure, right? On a daily basis, they got that Fitbit, they're like, oh, I did 10,000 steps today, right? It's right, right. Yes, okay. yes. Well, our version is going to be the same thing. It's gonna be a lifestyle for us, basically. So that if you have a bad moment or two bad moments or something that happens and you kind of like not feeling and you're ignoring the signs, even in long-term recovery, this will send you reminders. Are you drinking enough water? It doesn't look like you got enough sleep last night. You know, studies have shown that you should get more sleep or uh, your anxiety is through the roof. You should take a moment did you know that deep breaths and meditation can kind of reduce your heart rate in a matter of minutes mm -hmm. i mean so i don't want to call it a dumb and dumbed down version but it's the self-care and the wellness that everybody's looking for and for us in recovery that's really really important because you know somebody who's sober 20 years if i took a pile of drugs and shoved it in front of them. If I took a bottle and put it right in front of them, I got a bottle. It's not going to phase you. It's not going to do anything. Right? But more times than not, what happens is it's a series of unfortunate events. Mm -hmm. so you lost your job. It was a death in the family. You broke up with your significant other. Uh, there was an auto accident. Um, you had a bad dream. I mean, it, it's compounded things. It's not one thing that's going to get us, but it's little things, little things. And, you know, tendencies are when we're that far in the game of recovery, we ignore it. We spot it away like flies. That's nothing. I'll stand out of it, right? But yeah. isn't it funny yeah. how these things kind of stay in and work and fester and fester? And so before long, I'm not saying, I'm not spreading doom and gloom, I'm just giving a fact. If, if, if you think that you can't slip and, and relapse 20 years, 30 years sober, guess again, I mean, it happens. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this will be, this technology will adapt and promote that type of lifestyle. So there's two things I'm working on. The immediate one is life-saving and people need this stuff now. Mm -hmm. But once everybody has understood this technology and it becomes a household name, my focus is going to be on the lifestyle, on the long-term lifestyle. So there's a lot to chew on, on just those two things that I mentioned that can keep me busy, I mean, seriously, for a lifetime. But there's a lot more to this. But like anything good um, that, that you want to explain, you explain the basics. I mean, at the very least, there's a new shiny tool out that's available. Uh, in a well-rounded toolbox. This is the newest, latest, greatest cutting edge tool. And uh, pretty soon I'll, I'll be naming treatment centers that have adopted our technology um, where people can go seek treatment. And you know, if they want an opiate power treatment center, I'll, I'll be happy to point them to the ones that we, uh, the, that we work with. So that's really cool. That's very exciting, and, and you, you're changing the trajectory, and obviously you're going to change um, the death rate going to of overdose as well is going to be reduced, and yeah, you're yeah. changing the whole landscape with this. It's very exciting. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's completely, that's why I said, I mean, you know, all the other things I did, I'm not going to downplay them, but I'm not going to upplay them either. I mean, they were great, they were home runs in their own right. Congratulations. But this one is life-saving. This one's real near and dear to my heart because I am a product in, in recovery, right? Not only that, but I do understand what 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 the current 
protocol is, what the current treatment is, I don't like it. I, I personally can't even believe it's the gold standard. Right? Yeah. This yeah. new thing is going to reduce overdoses. It's going to help save lives. Um, it's going to get worldwide recognition. And we're talking about millions and millions and millions of people all around the world. So this one's going in the history books. I mean, and that in itself is exciting. But, but more exciting is this is exactly right in my wheelhouse. This is like I couldn't have played a more perfect role if I was an actor and I was an <laughs> the script. This one was for me. It was meant for me. Yes, um, and it's interesting as well. And and just um, just as a side note to the audience, you have to. I'll have a playlist of those um, of those early those early um, videos that we did, those early shows, where you actually experienced that on on night on. Um, we did it in real time. Yeah. And so you can see you can see the, the the effect, and you can see the growth. From there to here, and even the last episode we did, which was about last year sometime. So um, it's beautiful to see, but also um, it's well, back very. Then, not to interrupt, but back then, that, that one episode, that was right before I threw my pills away. Yes, yes. And yes. by the way. And I think you said so on, in, on the show as well. Yeah, at, at that time I was taking, I think, like eight or 12 different medications. And I was just like, this. I'm a walking zombie. Yeah, I'm clean and sober. Congratulations. But I'm dead from the neck up. Yes. Yes. Hey, yes. I don't even know how I was talking to you. Hi, Karina. Everything's <laughs> great. And it, wow. You know what I mean? But, um, but, but again, it just goes to show you. That, and we started off this, this conversation when you're talking about sober, and I was talking about lifestyle. Yes. Sober yes. is the zombie. That, that that recorded that episode. Yeah, I was sober, but I wasn't living. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, when you adapt it as a lifestyle, that's different. I don't take, by the way, any medication. I mean, I'm not saying people that require it or some people that, you know, bipolar or a lifetime kind of medication that they take, that's fine. But for the person that has quit a substance or for the person that has quit alcohol that doesn't have any of those ailments that is given something for anxiety uh, depression or withdrawal the goal is is not to get you hooked on those the goal is is to get you off of the drugs and alcohol and now work on getting off of those replacement drugs it's not to keep you on it for a lifestyle okay? yes yes uh, I, I, I think twice before I even take an aspirin, right? I, I don't need it, you know. If, if I did, I'd take it, trust me. But I don't wake up and say, oh, my God, my back hurts. I can't start my day until I take an aspirin. I mean, you, you see what I'm saying? I work around my ailments. I work around my pain. I work around injuries. I work around just like everything else. So I, 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 I work around this as well. I understood that the best state to be in is the healthiest me I can be that requires no no fillers and additives. You know what I mean? Yes. No preservatives. Yes. yes. And oh, it's a good feeling. It's a very healthy feeling. Um, always have energy, always on the go, always thinking very clearly. I, I like relaxing. I like being lazy, but not all day. You know what mm. I mean? Mm. So. Mm. Mm. I love that, and I always think about. Um, for me as well, I'm. I'm I've, 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 if you, I mean, you don't. I'm really anti those medications, and that's just my opinion, okay? Because I always feel like it's almost a a replacement. So I've 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 ta I've withdrawn. I've got I've gone off um, alcohol, drugs, but I'm just replacing it with something else. Um, and it's so easy to get addicted to a lot of them. I mean, we know that, but that's probably a. So, for me, at that point, it's also about doing the internal work, about doing the work f within yourself. Again, there's no one else to, to, to ask for help. You have to sort it out within yourself um, and work, like you were saying, work within yourself and create that lifestyle that you want, not anyone else. Yeah, I mean, and you can, just to clarify, you can ask for help and you can receive help, but at, 
but you have to want it. Yes, yes. You know what I, mean? I can have 10 sessions with you, but if I'm just doing it just to say I have 10 sessions with you, it's not going to work. I got to be immersed in what you're saying. I have to soak up what you're saying like a sponge soaks up water. Yes, okay? yes, yes. And then at the end, if I don't like what you said, at least I'll have everything I need to make my own decision. Yes. I'm going to use this part of what you said, this part, I don't know about. I'm not making fun of you. <laughs> I'm just saying. But that's when you formulate your own opinion. But you've got to want it. You've got to want it bad. You gotta want it like you can taste it. Mm -hmm. you, understand? you can't go through the motions or come in 50%. It's just, mm -hmm. it's not gonna work. Mm -hmm. It will mm -hmm. not work. Mm -hmm. And that's always, again, so difficult for, for a lot of people because it's like, eh, okay, I want it, but something else is more exciting or I, I can't give it to myself enough because, what again, we have to think about the only person we compare ourselves to, this is what you said, is me of yesterday, not whoever else you're comparing yourself to or, or social media or whatever it is. And that's also an important thing to um, consider. Yeah. So, um, what's next? I know you like, like, what's next, like, for Dino? I mean, I know you're immersed in this, but what other, like, things are you doing? Are you talking? Are you speaking? Like, for you? No, well, I've, I've, uh, I, I don't, to, to speak, just to speak, well, I take that back. I mean, I speak, and but my, my story perfectly does dovetails into this opiate technology. So if you mean, if that's what I'm doing, yeah, I do that all the time. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> uh, the next big thing that I'm um, doing is going to be in New York, New York City, Washington Square Park, July 28th. And um, it is promising to be the largest outdoor recovery event in history, it's actually the wow. Guinness Book of World Records is uh, is going to be there <laughs> to see to count the crowd. And, it is uh, pretty so, cool. Yeah, so everybody's just like, oh, well, do you need any notes? Do you need this? Or do I'm like, all I'm doing is talking about my story. <laughs> I I got it. I, I'm okay, you know. But uh, it, it's it's going to be fun. It's going to open, uh, you know. The, the point is, is to extend the awareness, especially from fentanyl, which is killing everybody. Yeah, yeah. It's a um, big thing. So, so it, it'll be a successful event, and then from there, I go to Canada, and there's going to be a TEDx-style recovery event there. Don't ask me what the city is. I, I don't, I don't even remember. But, but uh, it will be televised by. Uh, I think 9.3 million homes. Oh, so, wow. That's pretty yeah, so awesome. I, I need to turn on the engines for that one. But, but, but it's easy because, again, I'm talking about my story. I'm talking about my personal experience. And I'm talking about the solution that mm -hmm. I wish I had when I was going through my anxiety and my depression and my thoughts of, of using, which is, which is opiate. So, yes, yes. like I said, I mean, it's, it's a part that was meant for me. It's like, I don't even consider it work. I mean, it's, it's just <laughs> fun. But uh, uh, there's a lot of other things coming up. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you're talking about a, a project that'll last a lifetime, that'll be carried on for generations. But, I mean, mm -hmm. for about the next three years, I'm going to be pretty busy, yeah. <laughs> Well, that's pretty cool. That's exciting. It's really exciting. I just want to go back um, for a moment. And while you were speaking, I was thinking about, um, you know, we always speak about synchronicities and, and um, just let us know, how did you, um, opiate, how did you find opiate? How did opiate come into your life? Opiate. Sorry. Um, hmm. Okay. So I got, I, I got involved with the recovery community. Uh, so much so after I wrote my book that I would spend morning and night talking to you know these private platforms, private chats, and I would help people. I would give them advice 
and uh, it, it would make them feel good. So in turn, it would make me feel good. And I did this 24-7. I, I wouldn't stop. And uh, I got so noticed that the moderators of these platforms, every time that they would go on vacation or they were sick or whatever, they would write a note to like, and I'm talking like 80,000 people, 100,000 people. And they'd say, we won't be here today, but if anybody needs help, direct message Dino Miliotis. And I'm like, whoa, that's pretty, I mean, that's, I'm honored. And I don't yes. even work there, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> so I was just like, wow, that's pretty cool. So I got noticed and then I was asked to speak and I started speaking at different um, recovery centers. And then obviously I'm flying around and everything and they're like, you know, you could get paid for this. I'm like, yeah, well, that's good because I'm flying like every day. I mean, that'd be nice. So they're like, but you need a resume and if you could get us a resume on what you're doing and stuff, uh, that'd be great. I got no problem with the resume. I, I have no problem with my qualifications. The problem is, is that I don't think I wrote a resume since like 1993. <laughs> I haven't had a W-2 since 1993. So I'm like, all right, this is a new world. How do I write a resume now? I don't know. So <clears throat> I called a resume writer. The only one that answered that wasn't like 100% online. And uh, he said, okay, yeah, I'd love to write your resume. Tell me about Dina. I'm like, that's a dangerous question. Uh, how long do you have? It's like all the time in the world. So I started, I talked to him. And then at the end, um, he was like, promise me that you'll agree that we could put this resume writing on hold because I'd like for you to meet somebody. I think you guys have a lot to talk about. I'm like, I don't want to meet anybody. I just want my resume. He's like, just, just trust me. I'm like, all right, fine. So the person he puts me in touch with was the founder of OP. And uh, obviously they're doing the research and development and clinical trials and all that stuff. And I'm not a doctor. I'm not even smart, okay? but. I got it instantly because of what I explained, what the technology reads and how mm -hmm. it measures the draw for me. It was just like, I, I don't need to, like, it just set in. So I just, um, I had to get involved. And I did, and the rest is history. I love it. I just love those stories. It's just yeah. like it was meant to be. So it's very cool. Yeah, very, very yeah. Cool. You know, I mean, I, I, it, I, I, I knew, I knew at the time they're they're like, well, you're you're perfect for the part, you know, you're perfect, and we'd love to have you and, and stuff. But you know, what what's your background in medicine? What's your college education? I'm like, college dropout, can't stand reading. I don't, you know, well, you know, how can you how can you help? I'm like, you know what? I'm going to humanize this technology because. You know what? I'm an ordinary guy talking to ordinary people just like me. I'm talking to recovery people that are in the millions just mm -hmm. like me. Mm -hmm. And if I, could, if, if I could promote bug ban on my wrist, guess what? <laughs> this is no different. It's also on my wrist. And, um, and, and so that's how it started. I, I didn't try and be a doctor or, or smarter than, than I am, but I, I explained my story and what it does and what I wish was available when I went through it. And that's all I need to do. And it's, people are just understanding that and kind of embracing it in a genuine way. Uh, because a lot of people, they want to know what it does for a regular guy. They want to know mm -hmm. what it does for somebody who's in recovery, not a paid spokesperson, not somebody that's on TV, I'm not a lawyer, I'm a paid foot. You know, this is different. I went through it. I wear the stripes, the recovery stripes, probably yeah. by the way, like everybody else. So when you have those stripes, it's, you're at least gonna be heard for five minutes. And then if you have a good story to tell, you have a good product to, to present, then that's great. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, you don't. So that's all I needed, I'm just like, I just, I just need to explain this to my people. And as soon as I did, I mean, this just 
boom, just everything just started blowing up. But of course, um, the passion also makes a big difference, right? Yeah, I mean, but show me Because you've got that thing. passion in the, in, the, in the product. Show me one thing that we do that is of any importance to us that doesn't require passion. <laughs> show me one, right? So it's all relevant. My passion, it's, it's mine. But yes. you're passionate about stuff that's passionate to you, just like everybody else has a passion. Take that and make that, if you could just create a recipe, if you could just bottle up that passion and apply that for yourself in all things, you're just going to win over and over and over and over in life. Yes. That's the secret. Hmm, I love that. And it's also interesting how you've almost come full circle from bug band. You, you have to, what is it? You, you having a, a watch now this time instead of a bracelet. Almost 30 years later, it's all, it's all in the, that's what they said. They, they wrote, uh, they're like, here's a guy who sold like over 30 million, you know, wristbands. And now, you know, he's, he's got, he's got a smartwatch. <laughs> Obviously, a change of the times, but it's the same thing. It's kind of cool. It's very but, cool. But yeah, I mean, it's all on the wrist. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, thank you, Dino. This was so cool. It was so nice to catch up again. Um, hopefully, we can do it again sometime. Um, you know, if you've got a few minutes in your, because now your your schedule is obviously crazy. So, do you have an assistant? Uh, there's a there's a whole team which I love, so that I could just be what I'm really, really good at, which is a showman. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and thank, thank God for the team, because they're, they're the best. But uh, there's a lot of big things happening, a lot of big things happening. But we're just going to go through the story. I'm going to thank you for a journey with me. And so um, you'll, you'll be seeing a lot about this technology this next year. A lot of good things, but mm. keep in mind that we're saving a lot of people. That's, and that's the bottom line. That's the best yeah. thing about it. So, yeah. well, we'll keep, we'll watch you and see how it goes. So that'll be fun um, to see the, the development and the, the saving of the lives. That's the most amazing thing of all. Yeah, certainly is. Certainly so, is. Well, thank I appreciate you. this. You have a, Good holiday weekend, and congratulations for all your success and for all you do. And we'll catch up soon. Thank you. You too. You too. Yeah, lots of luck with opiate and, of course, anything else and everything else you do. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Dino. Thank you, everyone else, and we'll see you soon. Bye, Bye. for now.